Welcome to the fourth Taviran, a Wheel of Time podcast from the Credible Nerds. My name is Justin, and as always, I have my co-host with me, Mark. Hey guys, how's it going? So we're going to be talking about Angrial, Terangrial, and Saangrial. We've heard those those terms mentioned. We're going to talk about what they are, what they do, and all that good stuff. So I think, did we talk about it briefly on our last episode? Or was it on a Facebook conversation where which is the most powerful and which yeah. is the least powerful? And let's talk about that first. Okay. Yeah, we talked about it on uh, Justin and I are in a Facebook uh, group that talks about everything will of time. And that question came up. And the, even in that group, there was a lot of confusion about what's what. The way it works is Angrial and Sa Angrial are they magnify the power. They actually make, they, they open the conduit to the power at a greater degree. Some at, at small degrees and some at huge degrees, right? Some can add just a little bit of power and some just open the door to however much you want and they don't have a buffer. And that's what they call it. That's kind of what they refer to as a buffer that, a, that eventually stops you from using so much power that you'll kill yourself. And those ones, those most powerful ones, those are known as the Sa Angrial. And we, I think one of the most, we get to really see the more powerful ones in the very last book, right? Um, like with the Vora's Sangrial and with uh, the one that Demon Dread was using, right? Yeah. Well, we also had the, the two statues and the keys. Yeah, the Choden Cal. Yeah. Yep. So, and those were like huge uh, from the Age of Legends um, that were never used in the War of Power. And it was probably good they weren't used in the War of Power because they would have probably destroyed everything. Yeah. So, and they're so big and powerful that to use them, you actually have to have like an access key that allows you to access the Choden Cal. So, they're huge. Uh, I think they end up getting destroyed, right? Yeah, when Rand cleanses the the one power, the male half, Sidine. Oh, he, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, when he cleanses Sidine, he they kind of they just melt or they burn up or they they break, so he can't use them anymore. That's right. And then, so those are what Angrial and Saw Angrial are. They just allow access to more of the power. And then the the smaller versions, like the less powerful, would just be known as Angrial. And so forth. Now, Turangrial are normal items that do something with the power, but don't actually allow you to access the power. Okay, so uh, what that means would be like um, they had Turangrial back in the Age of Legends that would allow your the water to warm and to take a shower. We call it plumbing, heated water, right? But they water heater. Yeah, water heater. But they called them Turangrial, and it used the power at that degree to allow that to happen. Um, and they were usually created for a specific function. Yeah, yep, exactly. So you couldn't use this water heater to go and make your car run, right? So, uh, you know, they were very specific. I mean, and they did everything, right? I think there's a bunch that are mentioned throughout the books. Anything from, I don't know. I couldn't even name, I don't think, all of them that appear throughout the book other than they just are around. Uh, probably the most popular one is the uh, is the binding rod. Is that what they call it? I think so. Uh, yeah, that's the rod that to the Aes Sedai ch- um, make the three O's on, and it's for that specific reason uh, that it exists. So um, the fox head medallion is another one. That's a Turangrial. Right. Um, dream ring. Oh yeah, the dream ring that um, Egwene gets before she can just start entering it, uh, nearly daily. What are those arches that the ice that I go through th- for the testing? That's another one. The one in Rudian. That's another one. Uh, the the Adam. Um, are aren't those Tarangrials? Yeah. Yeah. So they, you know, there there's quite a few uh, that kind of go through um, that are very specific. But I mean, apparently. Back in the Age of Legends, they were just everywhere. So I'm sure, you know, like through time, they always talk about, oh, they found a cache of Turangrial. 
and the the uh, I said I came and took them back to the tower and they talk about it a little bit that there's so many that still haven't been tested and it's scary to test them because you never know what you're going to get and for example like the uh, for the testing right when they first started using the um, the arches they used to do specific things to go through and sisters kept going missing and missing and finally they just kind of dumbed it down to where they are now and they don't dare do anything else because they don't really know how to control it so these these exist and but they're so far dated that uh, a lot of them aren't used anymore yeah and those arches only ice that i can use they, they're activated by the one power but then you got the dream ring who which anybody can use pretty much so it kind of depends on what the the which terran girl you're using whether or not you need to use the power or not but do you think that's true i think yeah the only the ice that i can use it and the reason i ask is because matt went into the oh yeah movie. well at least the one in the white tower at least mm-hmm. is, and no one else enters it except for the ice that i I think, wasn't there people like Aes Sedai on each corner that had to channel while they did that? Yeah, and that's kind of how they understood it. But I wonder if someone like, like if Matt could go through that one too. And it is a different experience, right? Than what you get out of Rudian or the Stone of Tear. Yeah. So maybe that specific one you have to, but the Stone of Tear and the other one you don't. I don't know because um, Matt is like the only person that we see to go through it that can't channel because Perrin didn't go through them, right? No, no. The only other ones that did that we know about are like Avienda, Rand, Moraine. They can all channel. Yeah, I wonder why Rand or Perrin never went through. Well, the easiest answer, he just wasn't around when they were doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, another thing too is I wonder why none of the Forsaken tried to go through them. Like, it's almost like, oh, I know what's through that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stay away from that junk. Yeah, could be. So, yeah, interesting. Huh. So, yeah, that, that's really the difference. And th- there's a lot of different ones. And there's some really cool Angry All uh, out there. Um, Kalindor. Cal- oh, yeah, Kalindor. And that's, a, that's male-specific. Yeah. So, like, there are male or female-specific Angry Alls and Sangry Alls. We see that, right? Vora's song reel that I talked about earlier is only used by women. And I think it Sarkarin or I don't remember what they call the one that Demon Dread had, but I think that one's kind of like the male version of Vora's song reel. Yeah. And then they had like uh, Moraine's pendant that she could use to listen in. Was that just a trick or was it actually a, like an song reel or something? That's a good question. I wonder if it was a trick because I think I remember her talking about it, right? And she's like, very few people remember my tr- the trick, you know? Yeah, I think that was just something she used to focus. But then, but, uh, what's her name? Cad Swain had some in her hair. Yeah, and she gives them to Nine Eve, right, later? And then, uh, what's that one? Is it Farmatting that has that one that basically makes it so no one can channel? Yeah, yeah, that one was pretty cool. I like that concept. Uh huh. So th- th- that's one too, and just pretty interesting. And it's like you know that one was specifically created during the breaking. Yeah, so a lot of cool stuff with that. Uh, they all have their different purposes. I, I wish that they, some of them could have been better defined because it is kind of cool that oh, there's this mystery, but at the same time, it'd be nice to know what, they're, what they were created for and what you can use them for. I think that'd be cool to know too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know that they're going to start being created again, too, at the end of the book, because Avienda can sense them and can make, you know, and I think it's Elaine that can make them and, yeah. and stuff like that. And and uh, uh, who is it? Perrin can make power rots weapons and stuff like that, which is weird, but. Cool, though. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, there's some cool things. And uh, I mean, we get to see them used uh, left and right. All like all the time, really, right? Because uh, Rand finds that the fat man yeah, one, the he, yeah, the Buddha guy, and he like uses it forever. The the dream ring is always being used for the first few books. Yeah, so you see him everywhere. Like they're just around, and and so it's pretty cool 
to see what they do, especially Kalimdor at the end, right? I still don't quite 100% understand everything with that, but yeah. it's pretty neat how, uh, you know, what it does and what it was for. Yeah, some good stuff. It, was a, it adds a good dimension to the story. It's not just one power being used, but you have all these uh, objects that you can use to increase your power or direct your power a certain way or what have you. So I think it's a good good thing to add to the story. Mm-hmm. These objects. All right, so that's Angriol, Terangriol, and Sangriol. If you have any additional thoughts or anything to add to these three things, let us know. Join us on our social media pages. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, just search for Credible Nerds. We'll pop up and join us and join in on the conversation. Let us know what you think about these power rot objects or objects that can use the one power. So uh, also join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the credible nerds support us there. We have exclusive content that you only find there on Patreon. You can find our podcast on anchor.fm on Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Uh, your favorite podcast app, basically just do a search for Credible Nerds and you'll find us. We want to thank you for joining us here and may you find water and shade. We'll see you guys.